don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today it's time for May's mission inspiration. So this is the prompt sheet for the month. So the ingredients, in no particular order, are add a layer of paint with a spatula, add stamp in, use a die cut shape or two or three, add numbers, doodle flower or plant shapes, add colour with a q-tip, <laughs> um, add a song lyric quote, and add a scribble or doodle border. Okay, so the words for inspiration are flight, mother, circle, green and dawn. I think I'm going to concentrate more on the circle today. Um, because that's probably going to be the easiest one to also incorporate into some of the other shape or into the other ingredients such as the die cuts and the stamping and also maybe the doodling um, the doodle border you could put little circles in but also for your doodle flowers and plant shapes you can also do kind of circular shapes for those as well so yeah I think we're going to stick to maybe circle green and maybe even Mother Earth. Who knows? Who knows? So let me just pop that to one side. So this is my Mission Inspiration Journal for 2023. Um, so I need to turn to my next page, which is May here, because that was for April. And we can get cracking. So let's have a look at the first one. Add a layer of paint with a spatula. Okay, so I've got my spatula there. Um, so green, that's what we've got. So let's grab a couple of green colours. So we'll start off with um, dark I think and then I'm going to layer the lighter green on top so let's just add three blobs of green paint. So this is uh, olive green as you can see Deco Art Americana and then we'll drag the spatula down and then maybe drag it across, drag it across, drag it down. I haven't gessoed. So in case you're wondering, I have not gessoed. So I want to dry that. That's going to dry really, really quickly because I haven't gessoed, so the paint's going to soak into the page really quickly, which means if I put my heat gun on, it's going to do it in seconds. Six or seven seconds. I told you it wouldn't take long. Okay, so actually, we've got similar colours to last month, haven't we? So I'll put a blob of that light one there, blob of the light one there, and a blob of the light one there. And I might just also just put a blob of that light one there. So in fact, let's make it an odd number again. So let's add a blob that. Odd is always better than even. Our eyes perceive odd numbers better because there's no kind of like even numbers in nature. Not really, that's why you get three leaf clovers and that kind of thing. <laughs> okay, so we've gone over with the lighter colour. So again, let's get that dried off really, really quickly. And then just coming back in again with that darker colour again, just to add just a little bit more on top. Just to kind of break up. Perfect. Okay, just grab a wet wipe. Which is pretty dry. Just reinvigorate it. There we go. Okay, let's dry that off quick. Alrighty, so the next one we've got 
let's just tick these off as we're doing them. So we've added green and we've added a layer of paint with a spatula. Like I said, you don't have to do these in any particular order. You can add the stamp in last if you want to. As long as you kind of mix up um, and get inspired by some of the ingredients and some of the words for inspiration, it's fine. There are people that have just taken one from these, or maybe one of these and one of these, and, and done an art journal page, and that's fine too. The idea is, it's for inspiration, so you can take anything you want from this at all. Okay, so stamping. Um, now, I do have this little red rubber stamp, which is perfect. So I shall grab that. Uh, where are my skinny minis? There they are. So we'll use that one. So these flexible, small um, stamping blocks, as you can see, ergonomic, these are available on my website, which yes, I know it's a shameless plug. Um, you get all three in the set, all three sizes, if you can see those. Um, skinny minis, they're called. Right, so we'll mount that to the block and then let's have a look. Some green ink. Now, what did I do with my big tub of distress inks that I had out the other day? There they are. Let's have a look. Right. Green. So we want greens. Forest moss. That's a nice green colour. Darkish green. Uh, or is it too dark? No, we'll have that out. Um, and then I think the shabby shutters and peeled paint. Shabby shutters, mm, peeled paint probably. Let's try those two. Bundled sage, it's too dark really. So let's just dump those back in. Twisted citron's too yellowy. Right, let's try the lighter one first, the peeled paint. Right, it's quite some time since I've used these inks, so I'm not even sure whether or not they're still juicy. Let's have a look. Okay, so let's do one over there. Seems to be more juicy on the edges. Turn the stamp around, I think, and we'll do one over here. And then another final set. Actually, I think this is going to work out fine. So I'm going to turn that round so it's that way up. That's the beauty of these ones, you can turn them four different ways and get four different impressions. There we go. Like that. So that was the Indigo Blue Collector's Edition number 30, little mini circles. Right. So that can get put away now. I think I'm not going to do any more of those stamped. That's fine. Now I just need to dry this off because this is water-based ink on paint, which is now permanent, that's going to sit on the surface. So I'll just need to dry that off and be mindful that it also will be, um, you can reactivate it again once it's dry. Okay, so those stamped circles and now dry. They look actually like they've been done with a crayon. <laughs> yeah, I like those. I like those a lot. I should use those more often. Right, so that's adding stamping, but I could also go back and add a little bit more later on if I want to, with other bits and pieces. So the next thing, use a die cut shape or two or three. 
Okay, so for that, I'm also going to incorporate that with doodle, flower and plant shapes. So, what I've got is a selection of hand punches. Now, die cuts, punches, um, purchased die cuts are okay. Stickers, if you've got your one of those Victorian um, antiquarian sticker books, if you've got one of those, they're die cut already, so you could go in there and raid that to use some flower shapes if you wanted to, if you've got one. Any kind of sticker is allowed because theoretically if it's a sticker, it's been, it's been die cut. You can use hand punches, interpret how you wish. Right, so what I'm going to do with this then is I'm going to um, doodle first, I think. So I'm going to do just maybe a couple and I'm going to just kind of doodle some weird kind of scribbly shapes like that because this is kind of like an abstracty page and flowers can be whatever you want whatever shape you like there's different sizes different shapes of flower from like the traditional kind of daisy shape to the tulip shape to the lily kind of shape to the rose kind of shape you can have anything you want really so I've just doodled those so I'm also going to doodle some stems like so I said doodle <laughs> All right, let's doodle properly and then bring those down there and then let's doodle some kind of leaf shapes. And then maybe one more coming up here. Okay, so we've doodled some um, some kind of abstracty flower shapes. What I want to do is also now is I've got some um, dictionary pages. So I'm going to punch some flower shapes. So and I'm only going to need three. There we go. Well, theoretically there should have been four there. <laughs> it's one of those has got two on. Yeah, there's two in there. <laughs> there we go. Tell you what, let's swap that one for that one. So that's what I can do. So I can just stick those down if I wanted to, but because they're going to be the centre of the flowers, let's not do that. Let's move that out of the way. And I want them to be a bit more vibrant with colour. So I'm going to use orange because that's a really good, um, it's a really good contrast to the green. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit on there, grab a brush small brush and just to loosen it up a bit I'm going to use some matte medium so I'm going to add some matte medium there we go pick up that bit of the orange and then I'm going to just paint which makes the paint a little bit translucent but you can still see the flower shape well, you can still see the writing underneath. Let's put some kind of paintbrushy marks in there. That'll do. 
quickly dry that. All right, I'll grab that flower shape again. Let's go that way. And the reason I'm doing two pages, because this is really thin paper, so if I didn't, then it probably would maybe um, jam. Just cut that. Do -do 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 -do. Perfect. Okay. So separate that. There we go. So we've got nice. Uh, I need to get rid of that because otherwise I'm going to get my elbow in. Okay, so we're back. Right, so I've got some spirit glue. Oh dear. Oh. Do you know it's going to be one of them days, isn't it? The needle's stuck. There we go. Right. So we'll put a little blob of glue in the middle. There. Do this one. This one. He. Right, I need to find another needle now, don't I? To raid my sewing kit. All right, put that bit in the bin then, so it's out of the way. Paint away. Right, we'll give that a minute or two to dry and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we can now tick off circles, we can now tick off die cut shapes, we can now tick off doodle flower and plant shapes. Okay, add numbers to my page. Right, so I either need a stencil or a number stamp. Or I could do it by hand. Let me go and have a look in my stash and see what I've got. After going through my stencil collection, I found this old Dilusions one, Number Jumble I think it's called. Um, so I think this will do nicely, so I really ought to get around to doing my own number stencil one of these days. Eh? Right, so I'm bringing in that forest moss, which I got out earlier, if you remember. And I said it might be a bit too dark, but I think for stenciling and adding some numbers to the page, I think it's going to be more than adequate. So we'll just run some numbers that way. Lovely. Let me do some numbers down here. Like that. And then add some numbers up top here. That'll do nicely. Okay, so I can now add that back to my stash. Again, I've used water-based distressing, so I'll need to make sure that's dry before I move on to the next stage. Okay, so let's have a look. What have we got? Add numbers to the page. So let's nip down again. So add colour with a Q-tip. Okie doke. So this is a Q-tip or a cotton bud, depending on where you are in the world. 
<laughs> they've obviously got different names. Um, so you can use that if you haven't got one of those. We're looking at just applying ink or, ink or paint with the end. So we're going to create some little round dots with that. If you haven't got a Q-tip or a cotton bud or anything like that, then you could just use the end or a rubber on a, um, on a pencil or something that you can get a small impression with, maybe like on the end of a pen, something like that. Uh, or the end of a knitting needle or something along those lines just to give you um, a little bit of a dot or even a paintbrush handle to give you some dots. Right, so this is terracotta. Deco Art Americana terracotta. So I'm sticking with that kind of earthy kind of theme. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some dots. And we'll just do them randomly around the page. Doodle dots. You can call these if you like. Just nice little subtle collection. I think really that's all it needs. You don't really go, need to go mad, do you? A hint, a suggestion. <laughs> so everything's now nice and dry. So the next bit, let's have a look. So we've added colour with a Q-tip. So add a song lyric quote. So we'll tick that one off now. So what I've got is just a couple of lines from a song from 1972 by an artist called Tom Rush. And the song was called Mother Earth. So guess what? It also ticks that one too. So I've just printed them out on my um, label printer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I don't want they're quite wide, quite big, and I've done it on a very, very small print. So I'm just going to cut it out, not too carefully. I want it a bit ragged, a bit jagged and a bit ragged. There we go. Just to make it a bit smaller because you don't have to have words and quotes which, you know, are huge all the time or, you know, shout from the page. You can have, you know, fairly small and subtle text or quotes or phrases for your art journals if you want to. And I know a lot of people like to do handwritten ones, but if your handwriting is not, if you're not happy with your handwriting, um, then don't. You can get a printer, a label printer, or one of those impact label things, and use one of those all the time. That's what I did when I first started out journaling, before I became comfortable, you know, with my my own handwriting. I've cut, cut that out. I've cut it's there. <laughs> I couldn't even find it then. Right, so we've got a couple of lines. So, this is kind of like the last couple of lines from one of the chorus one of the choruses or but I just thought you know it does work really so I'm gonna put that there and then this one let's peel it back off the choice of having fingernails. And I'm going to put that one over here. So it says, though I treat her carelessly, Mother Earth provides for me. And again, I'm going to just go around and just do some kind of squiggly border because we're doing doodles, so we're allowed.
just to kind of blend it into the page. Here we go. I like it because you've got the white border you can have the white and you've got some white spaces inside as well it kind of fits quite nicely uh, and I've done them like I said I've done them small because I didn't want them to shout too loudly right I don't want to become preachy right so the last thing then for the page for this month is add a scribble or doodle border so we did say about circles so I'm going to do And like a little circly scribble border just to add some circles in here and there as you're going round and you can just vary them however you wish Ooh. Knock that over, let's go this way. Turn the corner. And this I think is one of those things that you can do and you can just kind of like lose yourself in just doing bits. <laughs> Try not to smudge that, and I have done a little bit now. There. there we go. I'm just going to go back over that. I think what I might do is just add. Your little doodle circles just into the center of those flowers as well and then maybe just a few squiggly wigglies and I think that's it I think I'm happy with the way that's turned out so all I'm going to do then, I think I'm going to sign that one over this side and put today's dates. I'm filming this the day before the Mission Inspiration. So today is the 5th of the 5th. So there you go. That is my Mission Inspiration for May. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that art journal page based on those prompts for May. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. But don't forget, if you want to join us over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group, um, that's the URL, but there's a clickable link in the description area below. All I have to do is just click that, pop across to Facebook, and ask to join. And then we have the multiple um, art challenges throughout the month. So we've got the main one at the beginning of the month and we've got another one halfway through. So that's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget, you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.